Today we're going to be extending the threads on a one inch steer tube on a bicycle fork and we'll also be milling the fork um, crown race seat and cutting the steer tube to length. The tools we'll be using for the job is a threading die, a uh, tube cutting guide, a hacksaw, cutting fluid, very important, and a fork crown race milling tool. This is a job that can be screwed up very easily at any stage. Uh, even uh, chasing existing threads, uh, you got to be really careful when you start the die that the, uh, the threads are gauged properly because it's real easy to uh, cross them up. And you don't want to have the die set too uh, tight. Um, you can always run the die over it again later to cut them a little deeper. You don't want to cut them too deep the first time. So make sure you've got lots of cutting fluid on, even to run it over the existing threads until you get it all the way down to where you're going to start cutting new threads. And uh, then we'll start with a whole different procedure. Even uh, chasing existing threads, I still like to go uh, no more than a half a turn and then back just to break up any uh, chips that uh, you may be cutting out of the threads. And keep an eye on the threads as well. Make sure that, they're, uh, that you're not cross-cutting them or anything. And it's a good idea to uh, test fit. A, uh, a lock nut on there. Make sure it starts easily. Make sure it isn't too loose. You should be able to thread it on by hand, but you shouldn't be able to wiggle around too much. That feels pretty good. Alright, so now we've got it down to the end of the, th the existing threads, and we need to extend it by about 25 millimeters, which is an inch, which is quite a lot. Okay, that's uh, you know, that much. So it's a thin wall material, so we want to be careful that we don't uh, cut too rapidly. Uh, keep lots of uh, cutting fluid on it. And I've got a plastic bag around here to keep from getting the fork too messed up. So keep lots of oil on it. And we're just going to progress slowly, take our time. When we get cutting a new thread, we'll advance a quarter turn, back a half. That way when we uh, make chips in the thread, we can clear them, get them out of the way, you can actually feel them crunch as you go. And we're just going to go a couple of revolutions at a time, and then let it cool. Thin wall material heats up very rapidly with the friction of the cutting, and it will actually expand, and if you keep cutting through as it expands, you'll get crappy threads. So you're much better off to uh, do a little bit of cutting, cut a couple of rotations, Move on to another job, have another job on the go, uh, let it cool, come back, put more oil on it, do another couple of revolutions, and uh, that way you're not wasting time, but you're not, uh, not rushing the job, you're letting it cool as you go, and you get much nicer threads out of the deal. Alright, so we're almost to depth there, I'm just going to take one more revolution, and we'll have it. Just a little bit to take it off. Okay, now we're going to clean and inspect the threads that we've cut. And they look pretty nice. Nice and clean and sharp. Threads on all the way very easily. Not too much slop. 
feels good. All right, our next step is to uh, mill the crown race seat. That's so that the uh, the race that the bearing sits on has a nice, clean, level, flat surface to sit on so that the headset will run true. The fork, the crown race milling tool, uh, this is a one inch and because one inch comes in two standards, JIS and ISO, this particular one is a JIS which means it's a 27 uh, millimeter uh, diameter on the crown race seat. So uh, we make sure we're using the right milling cutter for that. Uh, this one has two sides, a 27.1, 26.5. Uh, so we want to have the 27.1 millimeter facing out. We'll install that in our tool. Once again, we want to use lots of cutting fluid. We've got the one inch guide installed inside. We tighten it down so that it's nice and snug but still rotates freely. That's so that uh, it will go down straight and square as we mill. Uh, milling cutters only have teeth to face one way so it's not like a tap where you turn and back off. You just turn in the cutting direction only. You don't back off. And put some downward pressure on there. And we can see some shavings coming off. Do a few rotations, then pull it off and inspect it. Okay, so we've got a nice, clean, flat seat for the crown race to sit on. And it came out looking good. Now, uh, the seats can be adapted from one size to the other. Um, if you've got the wrong fork, you've bought an ISO, you really need a JIS, which means you need more material on there to, uh, to have it firmly seat. You can actually use a knurling tool and uh, put the knurling tool in the vise and put pressure on it. And the knurling uh, cutters, rollers, will actually um, make indentations and raise the surface so that it will, uh, it will actually increase the effective diameter and then you can take your, your milling tool and uh, run it over the knurling and it will give you a nice solid uh, 27 millimeter from a 26.4. Um, or if you need to go the other way, you've got one that's 27 millimeter, you need to mill it down to 26.4. You just uh, put the other cutter in, flip it around and uh, you can mill it down to 26.4. So a one inch fork. Um, if you've got the wrong one for your application, it can be adapted either way. So now we're going to cut the steer tube to length and we're using a, uh, a one inch threaded cutting guide. The steer tube actually threads right into it, mounted in the vise, and we're going to double check our length. As they say, measure twice, cut once. Um, now we're using a uh, a more modern headset than what was originally in the bike, which has a slightly uh, smaller stack height than the original. Um, so we've already checked our measurements there. We need we know that we need to be about two threads short of what the old fork was. So we're going to go ahead and do our measurements and start cutting. All right, that looks like it's all perfectly lined up. So off we go. Now for uh, steel uh, steer tubes I like to use uh, at least a 24 tooth per inch blade. Makes for uh, a nice smooth cut. Put the blade in the guide and actually put a little twist on it so that the cutting edge uh, stays against the uh, inner plate of the guide all the way through. Alright, so it's cut off. Now we're going to thread it 
in so that we've got uh, thread protruding through the uh, cutting guide so that we can clean up the end of the threads both inside and out. Okay, we got enough exposed there that we can use a deburring tool. Clear the burrs off the inside. Smooth that out. And the file. And rotate the fork as we file just to chamfer the leading edge of the thread. Clean off any burrs and sharp edges. set the, uh, the crown race onto the fork. Make sure that it's uh, clean. There's no debris or anything on there. Same with the seat. It's going to be a tight fit so it needs to be actually hammered in place with a, a tool. Now this is just a, a cheap fork, so uh, and it's steel, so it's very sturdy. So I'm not too concerned about uh, hammering on it. If it was an expensive racing fork, carbon fork, or something like that, uh, we'd do it in a whole different way. We'd support it under the crown rather than on the fork blades. So make sure it's going on straight. Whack it till it's down tight. I like to make a different sound on it. And we're home. And the final cleaning and inspection. The fork is ready to mount in the bike.